Welcome back. We're joined now by Republican Congressman Thaddeus McCotter. Welcome, Thad. Am I right? Thanks for having me. Well, it's great to have you here, and happy Thanksgiving week. You know, the first question I think we've just got to ask, because health care has been on the mind of everybody as they're watching it, give us your perspective on health care, why you voted against it, and what Republicans think should happen, and what are you for? Well, first, I think that the earlier conversation about Senator Stabenow, you were absolutely right. She was focused on the issue as opposed to the boodle, as some of her <laughs> colleagues were. And from Michigan, I think that was the right way to do it. As Republicans, we've been focused on trying to find ways for the innovation revolution around us to be harnessed so that people can be empowered to seek their own health care, to make their own decisions rather than have these types of decisions turned over to essentially a federal bureaucracy that's going to make their decisions early on. You talked about the horrible things that insurance companies are doing. Well, you still have the situation where the most powerful entity in the country is the federal government, and once they start doing the same thing to people, there will be no recourse. So we wanted to see where issues such as the ability to purchase insurance across state lines, which would be something that people could do to help drive down the cost, allow small businesses and individuals to pool together to be able to purchase health care for employees. In short, our first approach is to increase the supply of health care through market forces to meet the rising demand. Otherwise, what the government's going to do is by trying to control the supply of health care through taxation, regulation, etc., supply will be reduced at the very time demand goes up costs shoot through the roof and you get in a vicious circle. So what's the economic impact of this? I heard, speaking of, of, of Senator Stabin, I heard her on the radio the other morning predicting this would create 3.5 million jobs. Now I assume she means bureaucrats in Washington, but is there, is there an economic impact of this? Is there a jobs impact of this bill? Well, it's, the question is, obviously, when you start talking about taxing small business, mm -hmm. it's going to make it very difficult for them to want to expand. You have the question of what happens to employees if the employer decides to dump them into the public option at some point. That's going to be very painful for them. It might save them some money in the short run. So I think that in the end, it's not really about the jobs, it's about the access. The Democratic majority has been intent upon creating this system. They are concerned about the access of the coverage aspect of it rather than the cost or the cost of jobs to the economy. Now, one of the things that you're continuing to see out of the public is that they believe jobs in the economy is number one. They think health care should wait, and they think that it should be sensible, helpful, and affordable rather than a massive overhaul. These are consistently coming from the American public, not just the Republican Party. Well, I think that you and Frank Democrats agree that it should be sensible and affordable. How do you make sure that the almost 50 million Americans that don't have access to affordable quality health care have that access? Well, the number keeps changing. The president used 37, I believe. It keeps mm -hmm. rising. It keeps going down. First, we're talking about insurance. Last I looked, Medicare and Medicaid were still there. Medicaid was done by Lyndon Johnson to help people who had no access at all to the health care system. They're still accessing that system. We have state children's health insurance program, a Republican idea. They also have federally qual. It was a Republican proposal That's in 1994. That they all voted with, against under uh, uh, George Bush, for the record. It was created with Bill Clinton and a Republican Congress. It was a joint idea. It was part of that cooperation okay, you want but, from Nolan all the time. Well, it's true, but, but it was just they all voted against it when we were first trying to get it. But well, it was a radical ahead. departure from the earlier version. However, you also have federally qualified health clinics, which I think should be expanded. Yeah. I think this allows people preventative community-based health care. It allows them to also begin to get control of their own health care needs over a long period of time. Because one of the problems I think Republicans have noticed with the social safety net while we support it is it's supposed to be a way for people to have help as they continue to move towards the dignity of self-reliance, the empowerment to be able to take care of your own situation. Instead, we continue to see them becoming more of a snares and creating a permanent dependent underclass, which is very unfortunate and is very unfair to do that to them. So we want to find ways to start emancipating the poor from continued state dependence so that generation after generation doesn't live in an underclass and has the same opportunities and rights as the rest of us to stream and succeed in this country. Should we be moving away from an em employer-based health insurance system and provide people with tax breaks, provide people with vouchers um, for the and, and for the lower income health save, savings accounts, etc., to get people more involved in managing their own health care uh, costs. Well, now this is where I probably get to upset you for picking mm -hmm. up poor Debbie so long. People don't want radical change in their health care system. They don't want to have Republicans coming around saying, "We're going to go to your employer, and instead of forcing you into a public option, mm -hmm. we're going to force you into this." 
No, what they want are simple options that they may or may not take themselves to help increase the supply, to help control the cost of themselves. So I would argue that just as the Democrats have overreached on this bill, and Republicans should not turn around and try to overreach, start dictating to people what's going to happen with their health care. Do Republicans agree that everyone should be able to have access to insurance and not denied because of a pre-existing condition? We do. It was in the bill to go through a pooling with the states to allow them to come up with ways to stop pre-existing conditions. And, and that we don't discontinue insurance as people being rolled into operating rooms. Do you think that there's any way to get Republicans and Democrats to work together? To get through? I, I, I think there are some core principles, wellness, pre-existing conditions, that everybody could agree to. How do we talk to each other? Why won't people talk to each other and develop something that can help this country? Well, I think, obviously, as you, we've all known, Michigan, we're a little ahead of the curve on the working together because of a crisis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we've, we've gone through that, and we're trying to continue to do that. And and the day-to-day -day we do as a Michigan delegation. I think it's your seeing results. I think the amount of federal right. dollars coming to Michigan has increased steadily over the last two decades because of that. And out there, I think, some great advice one time from a chairman named John Dingle. He said, if you want to get a big job done, do not start on one end and try to get to the middle. Don't start on your right wing and try to get to the middle. Start in the middle and work your way out. That was not the case with this bill in either the House or the Senate. And what I think has to happen is a cooperation we saw in things such as one of the few amendments that was allowed was the Stupac Amendment. And you saw Republicans and Democrats vote together to make that part of the bill. You'll also see us, I think, if you start in the middle, continue to work with the 39 Democrats that voted against this in the House. But unfortunately, we're not starting. We I mean, it, it, see, it has a feeling that this process is moving very close to conclusion and that there's a juggernaut here um, that is taking this bill in a certain direction. Is there time to get to moderate this bill? Is there time to lessen its impact and improve its effectiveness? Well, I know that a lot of conservatives think that this is the vote in the Senate is the end of the world. Mm -hmm. Look, the American people are pretty clear that they don't want this version of health care reform. I know as Republicans we used to do some very counterproductive things <laughs> politically when we were trying to defy the will of the American people or we would screw something up. But I've never seen anything quite like this. I've never seen the will of the American people and the intensity and yet the hell-bent desire to go do this. I would argue that ultimately the American people win these two arguments. And so Republicans are waiting. We're waiting. If they want to work with us, we're more than happy to start in the center and build out. If not, then they, they do have the votes probably to do what they want to do, but that depends. It depends on how the intensity of the American people and their version of this gets across to the elected officials. What do you think about these town meetings that have happened and the the tone of the de of the debate that's occurred both at the grassroots level and in Washington on health care. Do you think it's helped the process? I don't know. I think it depends. I think that if you don't go to if you go to an event not to listen, if you go to an event not to engage in dialogue but for the purpose of disruption, it's unhelpful. We have had uh, that on. Obviously, it happened to Chairman Dingle. It's happened on the other side to people like myself. So. I think that what happens, and I always encourage people, is if you want to get your voice heard, make sure you're not screaming all the time. You show the due respect and the due willingness to engage in the dialogue. Otherwise, you'll just be written off as a nut, and that's not going to be helpful. Well, Congressman, you've had an opportunity to use your no button quite a bit this year. You voted against the stimulus bill. Now we're seeing the jobs jobs reports come out from that. The administration claims 650000 to a $1 million. Well, independent analysis suggests that it may not be anywhere near that number. Is the stimulus working um, in the way that it was promised to work, and is it too late to, head, to take that thing in a different direction? Well, I think that it hasn't done, by its own definition, what it was supposed to do. Eight and a half percent unemployment nationally. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we're far ahead of that with over 15. That was the hope. It did not work that way. I think it turned into more of a government bailout rather than an economic stimulus jobs bill. But one of the things that we said at the time when that was passed was that Republicans, we hoped we were wrong. Mm -hmm. Because we did not want to see the pain and suffering that would occur if a trillion dollar gamble, because we have to pay the interest on this, yeah. if a trillion dollar gamble was wrong, then what do we do? And that's unfortunately where we're seeing heading. Now, I would argue that it's not too late to change directions to try to take a lot of that that was supposed to go into some of the expenditures, put it into tax relief for small businesses, for the American working families. We use some of that money 
now Congressperson uh, Miller and all of us got behind that. So you can see where there are ways to utilize that to incentivize consumption and, and incentivize savings and eventually business expansion. So the money hasn't been gone out the door and some of it can obviously necessarily be used for deficit reduction and debt reduction because we're seeing the continuing weakening of the dollar without any concomitant export benefit for us and it may lead to another stagflationary bubble. Well we want to get you back um, to talk about the dollar and and fiscal policy uh, sometime in the near future because I think that's probably going to become a major issue next year. That's all the time we have for this week. Thanks for being with us on Am I Right? Thank you and happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to all of you. I'm Nolan Finley. And I'm Debbie Dingle. We'll see you next time.